Wednesday the 3rd of June. We've already looked at the first four chapters of Holes and I've reproduced those in a Word document for you. What I want us to do now is to compare those chapters with an, an extract I'm going to re read for you called A Walk in the Desert. What I want you to do is take the two pieces of writing and compare the way the two different authors describe the desert. I want you to collect the descriptive words in two columns, one for holes and one for a walk in the desert. And I want you to write down how they describe the desert. Do they use alliteration? Do they use personification? And which one do you prefer? Find your favourite phrase and explain why that is your favourite phrase. Um, I've reproduced the, A Walk in the Desert as well on a Word document, but I'll read it to you. Dad looked down at me and smiled. The car was crammed with luggage and we were almost ready to go. Food? In the rucksack. Water? In the rucksack. Rucksack? In the car. Car? On the drive. Boots? On my feet, I answered. We both laughed. Then, said Dad, we're ready to go. I'd been looking forward to this for ages, our first camping trip. Dad had been many times, but this was our first time together. I'd seen photographs of the desert, but I couldn't wait to see it there in front of me for real. I spent the car journey watching the small town we lived in gradually blend into the landscape I'd only seen before in the photographs. Just over an hour later, Dad stopped the car on a sandy strip of land. Here we are, he said. This is where our journey really begins. I looked all around me. There was nothing other than nature to be seen. A multicoloured mythical landscape stretched out in all directions. There were no signs of modern living, no signs that any other humans had been here before us. There was so, they, this was so much better than photographs. Dad helped me to put my rucksack on my back, then put on his own. The satisfying weight of it rested on my shoulders. How do you know which way to go? I asked. I've planned our route and I never come to a place like this without a map, he said. The desert can be beautiful, but it can also be dangerous if we don't treat it with respect. See that path? He asked. The one that goes through those rocks? That's the route we're taking. We'll find somewhere to camp up there and then tomorrow we'll walk in a big circle and arrive back here. Hopefully, he added with a wink. The desert looks massive, I said. It is, confirmed Dad. In fact, it is the biggest desert in North America. It covers over 200,000 square miles. Will we be walking all of it? I'm not sure we'll have time in our two days, smiled Dad. Perhaps we could if we stayed for three days. Both of us laughed. We set off walking towards the craggy rocks. Although it was winter, dry heat still pressed against our skin. Dad said if we'd come in the summer, the sun would have been too hot to walk in. And, believe it or not, there would have been a greater chance of rain. It's much greener than I thought it would be, I said to Dad. Rough green grass was soft underfoot, with spiky plants dotted across the landscape. Did you know that in times of food shortages, people managed to stay alive by eating some desert plants? Asked Dad. Even cacti? I asked incredulously. Even cacti. The stems and joints are tasteless, but they are full of water. There are a thousand different species of plant in the desert, and 345 of them are cacti. I've never tried them, though. <clears throat> I think I'd rather eat the things we brought. The Tohono O'odham tribe of North Native Americans used to make a fruit drink from the juice of a prickly pear and tea from the leaves of the creosote bush. The creosote bush can survive for two years without any water. Dad seemed to know everything about the desert. See that? asked Dad, pointing towards a woody shrub with pea green leaves. I nodded. That's called the Mormon tree plant. The Nar Narahath made that into a tea too because they said it was a cure for coughs and blocked noses. 
lots of plants you see in the desert were either eaten or used as medicines. Yucca plant roots were used as detergents and shampoo. Detergents and shampoo from a plant? Dad did know everything about the desert. Some rocks looked like they had been delicately placed one upon another by playful giants, whereas others looked like household utensils. They all seemed to have a character. There were rocks shaped like salt and pepper pots, a toaster, a butter dish and a huge wedge of cheese. Some stood to attention like soldiers on parade. Others were crooked and bent like old people who had lived a lifetime. At the top of a hill, we removed our rucksacks and took out our water bottles and lunch. It was the perfect place to rest a while. Do you think we'll see any animals? I asked Dad. I'll be very surprised if we don't, he answered. What kind of animals live in the desert? I asked as we were packing up to resume our walk. Many different kinds, answered Dad. There are bobcats, ring-tailed cats, mountain lions, wolves, coyotes, mule deer, white-tailed deer, antelopes, rabbits, hares, tree lizards, snakes. Rattlesnakes, I interrupted. Rattlesnakes, Dad confirmed. Aren't they them, veni, verin, poisonous? Venomous, yes, some of them are, but they'll only bite if they're provoked or they feel threatened. I felt like he was trying to reassure me, but it didn't work. Will you die if you get bitten by one? Not if you get it treated promptly. What other animals are here? I asked, hoping my dad would tell me about the cute, fluffy and not dangerous ones. There's the gila monster. Monster? It's a big lizard, not really a monster. Is it ven 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 venomous? It's ve it is venomous. And it moves very slowly, so it's of little threat to humans. You'd be very unlucky to get bitten by one. As we carried on walking, I started to wish I'd not asked so many questions. Later that night, after we devoured the contents of our cooking pot, I looked silently at the silhouette of the landscape. The sky was a length of black velvet upon which silver stars flickered haphazardly. As wonderful a sight as the desert at night was, I could feel my eyelids closing. I was tired, exhausted even. I tried to think pleasant thoughts so I could control my dreams. The last thing I wanted to think about were rattlesnakes and gila monsters. I awoke next morning to see my dad staring towards the horizon, watching the sun fully rise. When I realised I'd not been bitten in the night by a rattlesnake or a gila monster, I looked towards my dad and grinned. He sensed my grinning look and grinned straight back. They were smiles of pure joy. We packed our rucksacks and continued our walk. We didn't speak much on the return journey. There didn't seem like there was much to say. We were both lost in the beauty of the desert and I realised this was the first of many times we would walk in it together. There were 200,000 square miles of the desert to explore and we'd only seen a fraction of that. Elation surged inside me when I thought about the adventures to come.